For hand PA projection, we can use two different sizes of image receptor depending on how many projections will be performed on it. We can use 8x10 in lengthwise orientation for a single projection or 10x12 in crosswise orientation for two projections on one IR. The patient is placed in seated position at the end or beside of the radiographic table and don't forget to shield their gonads. As for the part position, place the affected hand in palmar surface thumb and place the metacarpal phalangeal joints in center of the image receptor and then separate the digits slightly. The central ray is directed perpendicularly to the third metacarpal phalangeal joint. The radiograph will show the P projection of the carpals, metacarpals, phalanges, except the first digit, the interarticulations of the hand, and the distal radius and ulna. As you can see, the patient is at the end of the radiographic table seated sideways. When positioning the affected hand of the patient, adjust the long axis of the hand and forearm in parallel with the image receptor's long axis and direct the central ray to the third MCP joint perpendicularly. Next up is the PA oblique projections of the hand. So this is used to investigate fractures and other pathologic conditions. Same sizes of image receptors are used as well as a patient's position. For hand PA oblique projection, the forearm of the affected side is rested on the table and the hand is placed with the palmar surface down in contact with the image receptor. This projection can be performed either with the use of a sponge fish for opening up the joint spaces or none to place the hand's metacarpophalangeal joints in 45 degrees obliquity with the IR plane. If we are to examine the metacarpals, we can obtain a PA oblique projection by rotating the patient's hand laterally from the pronated position until the fingertips touches the IR. We have to place the metacarpophalangeal joints in center of the IR. The central ray is directed perpendicularly to the third metacarpal phalangeal joint. The radiograph will show PA oblique projection of the bones and soft tissues of the head. As you can see, it has the same patient position as for the PA projection. And the only difference is the part position, as the hand is placed in oblique. The demonstration shown doesn't use sponge wedge. The hand lateral projection has two positions, lateral in extension and fan lateral. This projection can be used to localize foreign body. For lateral in extension, it could be lateral medial projection where the forearm is in contact with the table and the hand is in lateral position with the ulnar aspect down. Or medial lateral projection where the radial surface is placed against the IR, however, it is more difficult for the patient. When placing the patient's hand in lateral position, extend the digits and adjust the first digit at the right angle to the palm. This position will make the palmar surface perpendicular with the IR. In lateral in extension, the proximal phalanges are superimposed. A modification of hand lateral, which is a fan lateral, will eliminate this superimposition. For both position of the lateral projection, the central ray is directed perpendicularly to the second metacarpophalangeal joint. This is a demonstration of hand lateral in extension lateral medial projection. A sponge wedge can also be used as a support for hand lateral in extension to secure its position. Fan lateral is a modification of the position that is used to eliminate the superimposition of the proximal phalanges that can be seen in lateral in extension. Another modification of the hand lateral projection is a lateral medial infection. 
In this projection, the forearm is placed in contact with the image receptor as well and the hand is in lateral position with the ulnar aspect down. With the patient relaxing the digits to maintain the natural arc of the hand, I reach the digits so that they are perfectly superimposed and have the patient hold the thumb parallel with the IR or if necessary, immobilize the thumb with tape or sponge. The metacarpal phalangeal joints should be centered with our image receptor. As for our central ray, it is perpendicularly directed to our second metacarpal phalangeal joint. The lateral medial inflection demonstrates anterior and posterior displacement in fractures of metacarpals. Last projection for the hand is the AP oblique in medial rotation, or the Norgard method. It is also referred to as the ball catcher's position. This is a bilateral examination in which both hands is radiographed at the same time. This method is used to assist in detecting early radiologic changes needed to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis. For this method, the patient is seated at the end of the radiographic table and both hand is placed in half supinate position on the image receptor for comparison. To obtain the position of Norgard method, have the patient place the palms of both hands together and center the MCP joints of the medial aspects of both hands to IR. A 45 degree sponge is placed against the posterior aspect of the head. Rotate the patient's hand to a half supine position until the dorsal surface of each hand rests against the 45 degree sponges. Extend the fingers and abduct the thumb slightly to avoid supreme position. Another modification that is used for this method is we have to place the patient's fingers in a cup position as if the patient were going to catch a ball. And this is what we call the ball catcher's position. Our central ray is directed perpendicularly to a point midway between both hands at the level of the MCP joints for either of the two patient position. The radiograph will show a 45 degree AP oblique projection of both hands. The patient is positioned at the very end of the radiographic table unlike other projections. The hand is in oblique position, medial rotation of 45 degrees. As you can see, the fingers were cupped as if she will catch a ball. The central ray is directed at a point midway between the level of the MCP of both hands.